Well, you guys wanted to see me reviewing here Rolls-Royce and here we are today with the Rolls-Royce Cullinan Black Batch, the more sinister, more performing version of the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, this first Rolls-Royce SUV. Please join us in exterior, interior and the driving experience on German Autobahn. Here today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and the number one community to discuss cars with Thomas, as you know in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Looking at the front, you see the typical Rolls-Royce grille with the vertical structure, very strong and catches a lot of views when you look around people. Conservative design of the LED headlamps, LED daytime running light in the top part and the black batch version adds some dark features. So we have a lot of black background, for example, also Emily or Spirit of Ecstasy, the figure is all dark and out, so a more sinister look indeed. We have also black paint today, but this does not have to be the case for the black batch. So you can also get the black accentuation and so on with a black batch, but pick a totally different paint. That's possible. You can also make Emily disappear, for example, with closing or, then, <laughs> or opening the car again. But you can also do it intentionally from the interior, from the infotainment system. 5 meters 34, 17 foot 5 or 210 inches the length, 2.7 tons is the weight. And it's using an all aluminum platform from the Rolls-Royce Phantom, not from the BMW X7, although there are some you know, technology features that are being shared. Then you can see here the black batch, 22 inch wheels, also with black accentuations, red brake calipers as a contrast. Of course, this Rolls-Royce logo here stays upright and really rather a box form than the black paint has an accentuation here in golden or yellow color right there. Of course, a typical Rolls-Royce opening here of the doors, where you can, by the way, also close it again with pressing the knob here on the outside. Then the soft close. Well, if it works, in this case it didn't want to. Let's test again. Here we go. So, and then the back door, of course, suicide door, this opening, and here also you can press the knob then on the outside to close it again. Really heavy, of course, these doors. Here again, the very upright design, standing C-pillar moving forward a little bit. And yeah, I mean, the massive door handles, they serve as an own design function, so to say. About the suspension, standard air suspension there with the black batch, it's tuned a little bit stiffer. Then you have the rear axis steering also a standard in the steering with the rear axis in the opposite direction in the front wheels at slower speeds in the same direction as the front wheels for more stability at higher speeds. Then there's also an anti-roll bar, so anti-roll control that the car is being kept a little bit more upright. Let's see how that one turns out in driving. But first, let's finish the features. In the rear here, an upright design as well, color kind of box alike too. Then the vertical tail lamps, interesting the detailed work on the inside. Black batch also comes again with the black accentuations. Here, for example, also the black outer exhaust tip and yeah, the fake exhaust police. It's also active here. The real exhaust are then on the inside. And by the way, this is the first Rolls-Royce, not equipped with this vehicle, but you can get it, which can also use a towing bar, maybe for a trailer or something, maybe for your boat or so, possible with the Cullinan. And here we go with the 6.75 liter V12. 571 horsepower or here 600 horsepower in the black batch version a little bit tuned 
5.2 seconds or then here 4.9 seconds acceleration figure to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour all-wheel drive with rear wheel bias and 8-speed automatic gearbox. Well, soft close is key here, but when you use the electric closing of the doors, it's still a nice closing sound. Now to the interior, here inside of the doors, very high class door handles and so on. Pretty cool sound system, first speakers there. Then there's a black yellow design for today and rather very conservative steering wheel, also pretty large overall. Instruments here are a mix of digital and analog, you can see. That's where you control the lights. Typical with the high floor mats right there. It's a pretty cool feature, definitely. And then the seats, here we go. So far, only animal skin available. And then you might say, oh, they just make your choice. But a friend of mine wanted to have a vegan Rolls Royce and they denied it. They say it needs to be crash tested first, actually. So yeah, stuff like this can also happen. And so far, there's no effort from Rolls Royce Works to be animal free for the customers. Let's now get inside. And you have a higher seating position than in any other Rolls Royce, and that's also you know, one of the reasons you would go for the Rolls Royce SUV. It's even more comfortable because of this upright seating position. You have actually quite good overview. Yes, the hood is of course pretty long, but considering you know the size of the car, the overview is not too bad. Yeah, I have the seat. No, it's all down, and then still a lot of headroom left. Um, one means 86 or six foot one, no problem. Of course, a lot of electric controls here for the seat and also electric control for the huge steering wheel right there behind. Shifting levers actually right here you pull down like this or reverse like up. This is a rather classic approach and also many other deals we see here are in a vintage style and this is also the scheme of this whole vehicle. And by the way you can also close the co-driver door from here and of course your main door so you can do it from the outside as I've shown you but also just pull it yes but then again here are some buttons that you can close them actually in a more let's say sophisticated way bye now looking at the interior really central with the contrasting color and the contour stitches that goes away here you know in the curve that's pretty cool then the analog clock right there rather for the passenger you can set some hotkeys here here for example um, um, lowering or raising Emily in the front. <laughs> you, yeah, why not having this as a hotkey? When you shut down the car completely, then also here, um, you know, there will be cover for the screen. On that, this is basically older BMW technology, soon more details to that. Steering wheel here, once again, really large. On the right side, you have some, you know, sound control. On the left side, you set the cruise control. You can also move the thing in that you can see a little bit more of the instruments right there. This is a screen that is basically laid behind that. Then some analog features on top of that. So it's a mix, so to say. But the only thing you can adjust there is a very classic way here for consumption and so on in the very, very lower part of the display. Other than that here with the middle console, this is the vintage style. We also know, for example, from the Bentleys here to open and close the middle air vents. Then in the lower part, you just control it like with colder or warmer like this, but you can also switch the upper and lower part from that. That's actually quite nice, still an analog way of, and, and useful way. Steam wheel heating, seat cooling, seat heating. There's of course also seat massage available. And in the lower part, you can of course close that here. And then that you have adaptive cup holders, but they're quite small here to control the infotainment system and also some hotkeys for lowering or upper, putting the air suspension a little bit up. Off-road mode is also available, setting, you know, the um, stability system and the all-wheel drive for that, but yeah, not sure how many people will do that. Then there's another cubby hole right there and here under the massive armrest, there's some little space, for example, smartphone, USB-C connection or inductive charging. 
in one more detail look at the instruments. You can see here some kind of analog styling, but it's all digital for real. Left side RPM and right side, then you can see the fuel status. And then the multimedia system, this app view. We can also take a look at the map of the GPS. And you see here, this is then again, the BMW styling, but from older generations. So they are not really keeping up with the technology here. Also, you connect your smartphone just via Bluetooth or then with a cable for, um, you know, like just streaming music. No Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto available whatsoever. So also lagging behind there. You can, for example, set settings for the Spirit of Ecstasy in the front, where you lower that, for example, or just doing it automatic with opening and closing the car, for example. Vehicle settings, you can change, for example, some interior and exterior lighting. That's always helpful, of course, ambient lighting. Yeah, here, for example, warm white or cool white color, but not too many choices right here. And setting brightness all the way up. That's, of course, always the thing. Overall, the infotainment system rather not spectacular. And as I said, not really up to date. About the rear view camera, here we go. So we can have this view, then a split view, left side with this fake drone from above. But you can also have a different angle, for example, just at the rear, and then you have it a little bit wider, or then the classic view again with a split. And a short look at the head-up display right here, speed and the loud speed, but yeah, it's not that sharp from time to time, so not the best one I've seen, but also not the worst one. And then of course the suicide door opening here for the rear seats, and it's very, very plush here in the rear. You have plenty of lag room, so feel really at home here really interesting with the high floor mats then you also have electrically a folding out here that barely fits with my feet here this rear entertainment system you can plug in own sources or you can just um, mirror what's happening there in the front so yeah it's very interesting definitely here you have a lot of space to move around also from here to the middle seat or to the other seat then and it's actually it would be very nice to cuddle here, also looking at the star ceiling. This is an option, by the way, this star ceiling. So 1,344 glass fiber lights, so they don't use LED because LED would be a little bit bigger. Here's a you know, more fine structure, there's even a shooting star function. So from time to time you can see shooting stars going over the ceiling. And especially for the rear passengers here, this is just a dream to look at. This is really awesome. Here in the middle, you can also you know, get different features here. In this case, just some storage space and also cup holders. And you can have some more practicability here with reaching through the trunk. Of course, more special features to the trunk is coming up very soon. You have a lower climate unit that also, again, mirrors the same thing we have in the front. But then again, I mean, it's really great luxury atmosphere here. So comfortable also in the rear and especially being chauffeur at night with this star ceiling here is surely something very special. Inside of the rear doors you find USB-C supply and also there you can fold the seat so like this and then you can also fold down the seats from here. And not to forget the umbrellas in four-door Rolls-Royce like here they are stored in the rear doors like this here and in two-door Rolls-Royce they are in the front doors. Here it's a nice clicking system. By the way, when you sit in the rear, there's also a closing button for the rear doors, like here, just hidden behind the pillar. And then you can also electrically close the rear door. And here we go with the trunk, 560 to 1930 liters. Would it be in the normal setup? It's a split hatch right here, also with this, let's say, yeah, picnic style. Uh, we know that from the BMW X5 as well, for example, or the X7. Here, how we can put luggage inside. Doesn't fit in the vertical way here. Uh, I'll now explain you why. So, we have a special thing in here. First of all, this one is manual, this cover here. And then you can also flip the seats with these buttons. Just press them once, and then they can be folded on that. Normal length right here of the trunk is about one meters and ten, excluding you know the additional one, and the width here 
this part is a meter a little bit more than in the upper part and when you really want to load things through in your Rolls Royce no problem here this is about two meters just up to here of course this additional piece here is costing you some trunk height so the normal height here up to the cover is just about you know about 40 centimeters a little bit less but it would be more here this one is almost 20 centimeters and the thing here is, and that's the surprise for the day, so you need about 14,000 euros or dollars extra. And then you get these additional picnic seats. Yeah, probably the most cost intensive extra I've ever experienced. You fold this one up, fold this one up. Here we go with the table and then you can have a proper picnic here in style. Um, definitely a very, yeah, of course also color fitting to the rest of the interior, yeah, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> and I guess you want to enjoy how it disappears again, don't you? <laughs> By the way, you can also get a glass split, like a glass layer, from the trunk to the inside of the cabin. And the reason for that is because there were obviously like customers asking for that when they use the chairs here at the beach in the sand that the sand then doesn't get to the rest of the cabin so there's a complete insulation of the cabin hmm. hey Thomas is driving part here with the Rolls-Royce Cullinan and we go to the low mode which is not like for low gear they just kept this name so to say formerly used for going down hills a lot, or so for a long time but here it's kind of the sport mode so you know really interesting we go from 30 kilometers an hour let's see how 2.7 tons move with 600 horsepower that's 200 kilometers an hour 125 miles an hour and Hey, <laughs> this BMW obviously wants to race us, but now decided to cancel it. Never experienced it on this motorway part. Wow. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, first time with the Rolls Royce here doing this acceleration and also first time being raced. Obviously, someone was like saying, hey, it's the Rolls accelerating. Let's try to beat that. <laughs> So, this was a very smooth acceleration, of course, very powerful, but you felt the weight of the car. Now hard on the, well, not too hard on the brakes, but reasonably on the brakes. But whoa, whoa, that's pushing. So, definitely feel how much weight is being moved. You also maybe saw that on camera when I was first accelerating, like, wow, it was leaning backwards. Very interesting. Deactivating the low mode. Very powerful, of course, as acceleration still and impressive what they can do. And sound wise, I'm not too impressed actually from this V12 IU. Yeah, and then here in the black batch version, 4.9 seconds instead of 5.2 seconds in the acceleration figure. So instead of 571 horsepower, we got the 600 horsepower. Yeah, does it make too much of a difference? Actually, not really. But no, we take that extra horsepower today. In the tunnel, let's go to the low mode again. I also raise the right window. Then you also hear the difference, like from the noise insulation. And yeah, let's hit the throttle. Not too noticeable, but now I'm in the tunnel. How, li listen to how loud it is actually with the window do down in the tunnel. And now I'll raise the window up again. And it's so silent, you wouldn't even guess we are in a tunnel. That's amazing, you know? And also so cool to look at the star ceiling here. That's actually the best thing when you're sitting in the rear of this vehicle, driving at night, driving in a tunnel, sitting there, looking at the star ceiling, maybe even then, you know, catching a shooting star from time to time, which is inbuilt in this function. Yeah, to me, the most <laughs> favorite feature here in, in this vehicle here today. Wow, and then again, this 
sovereign right, in this case, I can really stress that word. Um, I use, you know, I just used to describe that when cars are very calm, in a subtle way, they convey this supreme feeling. And then I say it's like, you know, a sovereign driving feeling. And yeah, in this case, you can really take that literally. Well, the Queen is not here with me today, but um, she was yesterday, so best greetings from her. <laughs> yeah. So silent. Yeah, I think that's one of the coolest things about this vehicle. Yeah, or maybe just, you know, moving Emily in the top there, yeah, down and up again, <laughs> just for showing purpose. Here, when you're in the traffic light, someone next to you, and then, like, you're moving the figure up and down, so you can play with this stuff, definitely. But powerful, definitely, but I mean, it's not set out to be like a performance vehicle, although it has a lot of horsepower. Mm. Like about the agility, you know, we have these technologies with the rear axle steering, the anti-roll bars, as I mentioned in here, a little bit stiffer in the black batch version, but still it does shake somewhat, you know, you know, harden the gas in the corner, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, that, you do just feel the weight, you know, so it's not an agile SUV, it doesn't want to be, it's not set out to be, but these modern technologies make it a little bit better, make it a little bit more agile, really so important that it has this rear axle steering that makes it more agile when you're like here, just on the, it, it creates a special feeling, you know, these um, rear axle steering, so to say, fake a shorter wheelbase, so it feels like having a little shorter wheelbase. Yeah, that's definitely a very, very good asset to this vehicle. And one more acceleration for you when we are already at the speed, 90 kilometers an hour, let's see. That's again 200 and whoa. The steering wheel is very loose, especially at higher speeds, so it doesn't give you me the best feedback. Whoa. Yeah, it doesn't feel so much in control, actually, but, I mean, SUV here at 200 kilometers an hour, still, what a noise insulation, so silent here still, due to, uh, you know, although we have that speed, not too stable here, but the um, rear axis steering, which goes in the same direction as the front wheels, in this case, makes it more stable, so, it is suspension-wise more stable than expected, also at higher speeds. But then again, whoa, this, you know, the steering, mm, that could give you better feedback. So it doesn't feel that much connected then. So that's, yeah, I mean, not supposed to be a sporty or something, but still it would also be a safety issue if the steering would convey a better and more direct feeling, I think. Well, what about some city driving experience? And I mean, I always check out the reactions of people and I mean, most cars are not really noticed. And recently the Porsche Taycan got a lot of attention and a lot of positive connotation. And here in this case, when you know, you see like some pedestrian cyclists close by and so on, and they look at that car and it's like, what is that? Is more like you're from Mars or something and just landed and <laughs> yeah so because I mean in, in this case it's actually quite likable no matter which road you take that this vehicle has never been seen on this road before just you know matter of statistics or figures so definitely catches a lot of views no doubt about that it is extremely silent also in city driving here just at about 50 kilometers an hour 30 miles per hour and you just hear yourself talking and think like where's the echo there's no echo and you're absolutely insulated from your surroundings here and I mean it's quite enjoyable because it's such a silent and also still a soft ride here the black batch has a stiffer setup from the air suspension and also these 22 inch wheels make some bumps on the road, notable then. 
But then again, the air suspension is fighting <laughs> these bumps on the road. So the air suspension is actually quite good, yes. And although we have the stiffer setup here in the, in the black batch version, mm, you still have like a little bit of this shaking boat-like feeling. Um, however, what's pretty cool is you have the rear axle steering that makes it a little bit easier to ease the car around, although it's still so wide. You do have problems getting in and out of the basement garage, and then you always look at the wheels. Oh, does it fit? So nothing for narrow cities actually. And yeah, finding a parking spot is, at least in Europe, hardly possible. But the rear axle steering, I really like that feature. Also tested on several other brands. It's so cool, it gives you more agility, especially at the low speeds, you know, up to three degrees, taken from the BMW group. And this really gives a more agile feeling than the car actually is, especially than at lower speeds, really cool. This anti-roll control, anti-roll bars, they're also installed here. Mm, they don't have such a big effect at, um, at slow speeds, but more playing effect than at higher speeds, um, as we talked about earlier, um, but still, you know, it doesn't shake too much to left and right. I think it's exactly right, but you still feel it's an air suspension, although we are in the black batch, in the sportier version, here then with the 600 horsepower. So you more feel like a yacht captain. So, you know, cruising like with an exclusive boat and with this huge hood in front of you and always looking at Emily then in the black styling or dark styling. So this is really something very unique. And you also get the impression of driving a vintage modern car. I could say it that way because of the very large steering wheel, which is again reminding us rather um, of ship. Um, and the steering wheel design is also not too modern. It's rather, rather vintage. You don't have a carbon or Android auto than these digital analog instruments. So a lot of different elements are tuned to be so to say, half analog. Oh, this is a McLaren on the side of the road. Um, so you indeed feel, yeah, something in between of a vintage and, and the modern vehicle. And however, here as the first Rolls-Royce SUV, you sit more upright, it's really comfortable. It does actually fit the brand, although it's predominantly like a sedan brand. Due to the long hood, it doesn't look too different then. It's just higher. And this upright seating position is actually, you know, playing in the in the hands of the concept of this very luxury, comfort, super silent, very well insulated vehicle. So I think that really does work. You know, there was a great uproar when they first announced they're going for the first SUV. But, you know, in this case, I can say, yeah, why not? Um, still a vehicle, you know, <laughs> still a car, just a little bit higher then. And again, it does fit to the... Um, overall Rolls-Royce concept, definitely. So, you feel a little bit too big here for the European roads, definitely. So, um, it won't be such an effect when you're driving in the US, at least West Coast or Central. Um, and for example, you know, being sold this vehicle here also to a lot of Arab countries and so on. And it's actually quite, quite a lot of fun to enjoy this silence here all the way through and yeah also <laughs> check check out some of the looks you get there definitely as for the fuel economy you can go for some 15 liters or one one kilometers but that's already quite good and this is also one of the rare cases you have equal figures for liters and one kilometers and also mpg so some 15 mpg can be possible um, 16 mpg 17 mpg uk otherwise like 14 15 mpg us but that's again when you keep it rather slowly um, when you hit it on the motorway and drive a little bit faster than rather than like 17 liters or one kilometers and uh, even lower than in the mpg figures it's just a way 2.7 tons can't deny that and you also feel it when braking of course massive brakes here on there but can't deny physics, can't deny the brake, you know, the, just, just the weight of the car applying on the brakes at some point. Definitely. Actually, quite good overview, so, you know, all this upright building style. So, um, you know, the, the Rolls Royce I've been driving with the Braith, and this is actually having a good better overview here. 
So considering it's really a huge vehicle, I have quite a good feeling what's being happening around, uh, you know, around me. Especially, <laughs> yeah, I, I know at, the, at all times that this hood is really, really large. Always reminding me. We're getting again on a little bit of motorway and we can once again go to this low gear, which is, you know, some, yeah. <laughs> some really like funny that they still call it low, definitely. And we accelerate from 50 to 80 kilometers now. Just a small one. And that's it. So just once on the throttle and due to the soft air suspension and, you know, the brutal power of this V12, you really like, you know, going backwards, you know, the weight is shifting to the rear axle and you <laughs> That's, yeah, that's really a lot of fun. Uh, 3.5 tons only allowed on the left lane. Yeah, what did they say? 2.7? Yeah, that's still allowed. So <laughs> let's go to the left lane where you can drive a little bit faster. There are also some assistance systems built in this vehicle. So um, you can, for example, activate cruise control right here. Well, that's, sh <laughs> that's shaking, you know, it's like when you go to the left. Really interesting. Um, so there we go, cruise control activated. And then you can increase the speed by one or 10 kilometers an hour by pressing a little bit further right there. And we can also increase or decrease the distance to car front of me, so it's an adaptive cruise control. The visualized vehicle there, does it look like a Cullinan? I don't know. Looks all sedan like the visualization in there. Yeah, maybe they saved the money for that. I don't know. Yeah, it's getting really narrow here in this lane. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, maybe you all can also pick that up on camera here, 80 kilometers an hour and some cars and you know, all around me and it's so silent in here. So this very relaxing silent ride, this is definitely something special. If you want to pay the price for having, you know, so much metal around you at the same time, yeah, that definitely remains up to you. I can say that, I mean, even if you have all the money in the world, depending on the road situations, it's less or more disturbing. But when you, let's say, drive a normal high-class premium SUV, it's just more agile and versatile. It can also be as comfortable and also good in noise insulation. It's just that the ratio here of what you have on the interior and of course, a lot of space, yes, but also, you know, how much car is around you, it's not a good ratio, you know what I mean? And so sometimes people think, you know, my life's goal is driving a Rolls Royce. And I mean, this car has amazing features and, you know, has an amazing relaxing drive, but like certain possession quite often also comes with disadvantages and you have to be just aware of that. So. Now we switch the lane to the right. We also have a blind spot monitor in the side mirrors here. It's also funny how upright the side mirror is. It's also something you rarely see. At the moment, no one um, dares to overtake us. <laughs> so, can I show the, the blind spot monitor at the moment here? Once again, I set the cruise control then to 100 kilometers an hour, which would be also in many countries a normal motorway speed. The head up display, by the way, is. Um, to me, could be a little bit sharper in the focus, actually. Um, we had that so far with some vehicles. Happens from time to time, yeah. So let's see, what about like a road of, run of road protection? Yeah. It tells me it would be on here and I can also check that here in the assistance systems, all on, yeah. But obviously that didn't react there. But definitely, once again, city driving and low motor speed, motorway speed driving, yeah, amazing experience with this soft ship alike ride. And now to the conclusion for today with the Rolls Royce Cullinan. Well, of course, this very impressive. Rolls-Royce design on the exterior, a vintage car with some modern features in the black badge version, more sinister look, 
dark accentuations, a little sporty in the right. The interior, interesting design elements as we know from Rolls-Royce. My favorite feature, of course, the star ceiling. And of course, very, very comfortable. But of course, also not too much space considering the exterior length. Very funny, of course, with this picnic option on the back. But if you pay 14K for that, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. But, you know, the arguing is always that customers of this car would not look at the price. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but then again, no alternatives to animal skin. And yeah, if you look at that, then... Hmm. Really not sustainable at all this vehicle. Of course, there are other high-class premium luxury SUVs which are better than in this respect. Driving-wise, it is a very soft and super silent ride. That's one of the key features. So silent, also at higher speeds. Not really stable or agile, but this rear axle suspension makes it more agile than you would maybe expect. So that was actually quite cool. Steering feeling a little bit loose, especially at higher speeds. So more definitely a cruising vehicle, especially with the long hood here in the front. Overall conclusion, I mean, yeah, this with every spec and so on, about almost 400,000 euros or dollars. Is it really worth it? You know, I'm always honest with you and I have to say no. If I had all the world, uh, I earned all the world's money, I would still not buy this vehicle. I would rather go for Mercedes GLE or BMW X5 because they are the better of cars overall and you can have more fun with it. You go for this vehicle because it is so expensive and it's so exclusive that not so many other people have it. And, you know, I'm interested in protecting the environment and also, you know, in protecting animals. But I'm also a car enthusiast and I'm not a saint and I don't have the perfect environmental friendly lifestyle. But in this case, I really have to say, considering modern times and the fuel economy of this vehicle, the weight, the exterior to interior dimensions, the amount of cows that were sacrificed for this interior, I really have to say, this is highly doubtful in modern times and you can create a high modern luxury premium SUV also with more with a more sustainable approach that's possible but so far Rolls-Royce is refusing they will have to change their attitude towards that because looking at their you know very strong heritage it's very conservative and it's very exclusive but you can also transport these features in you know in a more futuristic world or at least not futuristic, but just up to date. And that they don't even offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is another sign that they're really refusing a modern change. Yeah, some new modern technologies, they were actually quite cool, but I think they should have done more to transport this premium luxury heritage more into a modern, sustainable and high-tech world. Or oh, what's your take? Definitely leaves a lot of discussion, Please join us here in the comments and see you next time.